In the mid-1980s, the words Grand Wagoneer became synonymous with the gold standard of SUVs, but eventually, sales of the Grand Wagoneer started to decline, and it was discontinued in 1991. Actually, those that bought a 1991 Grand Wagoneer had the option of getting a gold final edition Jeep Grand Wagoneer badge on their dashboard. Well, it's now 2021, and the Grand Jeep is back. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. So yeah, the large luxury SUV segment is a pretty popular one here in the United States. You have some home team legends like the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator. And then you have some outsiders like the BMW X7, Infiniti QX80, the Lexus LX, and the Mercedes-Benz GLS. And after years of seeing the segment grow, Jeep decided that it was finally time to bring the Grand Wagoneer back. There's also a not so Grand Wagoneer, so let's clear up that confusion. So first you have the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which I recently reviewed, you can check that out. And that really just competes with the Honda Pilot, the Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, and the Chevrolet Traverse, basically your three row regular SUVs. Then you have the larger Jeep Wagoneer, which really competes with the likes of the Chevy Tahoe, the GMC Yukon, and the Toyota Sequoia. But then you have the big daddy Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which is just the same thing as a Wagoneer, but with a lot more luxury. And I mean, a lot. We'll go over the luxury parts in our tour a little bit later, but let's talk about how the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer drives. The original one was based on the Gladiator pickup back in the day, but now since the Gladiator pickup is a smaller pickup based on the Wrangler, this one here is based on the Ram 1500. But yeah, this thing is very, very comfortable to drive, very smooth, very serene, but it is also very heavy, tipping the scale at over 6,300 pounds. The Grand Wagoneer is extra large. But acceleration from standstill or even when you're going 60 miles an hour is pretty impressive because this thing is powered by a 6.4 liter V8 pumping out 471 horsepower. It'll do zero to 60 in six seconds flat. Nonetheless, this thing is very large. It feels larger than the competition. Parking it in normal parking spots can be a bit of a challenge and driving on narrow roads, well, you really have to be aware of your surroundings. Competitors like the Cadillac Escalade, BMW X7, Mercedes-Benz GLS, feel just a bit easier to drive around town. The Grand Wagoneer, on the other hand, is all about being grand and large, and it has a very large price tag to go along with it. So is the Grand Wagoneer grand enough to compete in this very competitive segment? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer, and then I'll give you my opinion on how this stacks up against the competition. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like. All right, let's do this. All right, let's start off this tour by taking a look at all the cool and interesting things that you should know about the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. So the first thing you'll notice when getting in the Grand Wagoneer is the insane amount of screenage. You've got a screen here, 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 and well, apparently I'm not cool enough to have the top of the line model, but there is another screen here in front of the passenger, which is standard on higher end trims and optional on lower end trims for $1,100. And $95. So let's go through them. The first screen here is a 12.3 inch digital instrument display, and it's very, very informative. You can basically have any info you need right in front of you, and you also get a full screen map view. In the center, you have a 12 inch touchscreen display for the Uconnect 5 infotainment system, and Uconnect is still one of my favorite infotainment systems in the industry. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as standard. And one thing I have to point out is that Jeep didn't just stuff everything into the infotainment system, which is starting to be the trend with other luxury brands. You still have physical controls for the volume, kind of physical controls for your heated and cooled seats and your heated steering wheel. And right below that, you have access to some quick climate settings. The Grand Wagoneer also gets an extra 10.25 inch touchscreen display right below the main one for deeper access to your climate settings, seat settings, and of course, your massaging seats, which are standard on all Grand Wagoneer models. Oh, and by the way, this screen also has some hidden storage behind it in case you need to hide anything. That is pretty cool. Now the passenger screen, which I don't have here, also measures 10.25 inches, and that will allow you to view the navigation, control media, and actually watch movies. But don't worry, there's a privacy filter here so the driver can't get distracted by looking over and see what you're doing. Hop in the back and guess what? More screens here, here, and here. If you go for the rear entertainment system, you get two 10.1 inch touchscreen displays with Amazon Fire TV so you can watch Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Disney Plus, or whatever you want. Not to mention the whole system comes with an Amazon Fire TV remote, which is pretty cool. 
You also get a USB port to import videos or an HDMI port if you want to hook up your PlayStation 5. And then instead of annoying the driver with your Are We There Yet questions, you can just check right back here on the screen with an app called Are We There Yet. And you can also adjust your climate settings right from here. And finally, the Grand Wagoneer also comes standard with this 10.25 inch touchscreen display in the middle of the second row seats that offers you the ability to control your heated or cooled seats as well as the ability to adjust your climate settings. Oh man, wait, I think I forgot another screen right here in the rear view mirror. So if you get it maxed out with all the options, you have about nine screens, my God. Now, since all that has already taken up a big chunk of time, let's do a quick rapid fire session of some other cool and interesting features that you can find in the Grand Wagoneer. The gear selector right here is actually real aluminum. That's pretty cool. Jeep really paid attention to the start and stop button and gave it its own casing that's leather trimmed. They didn't just stick it on the dash, which I can really appreciate. If you want to check up on your second and third row passengers, you can just use fam cam and do that. You can just tap on each seat and zoom in as well. The storage area under the armrest is actually a cooler to keep your drinks or food cold. As you approach the Grand Wagoneer, you'll see that giant running boards will deploy so you can easily climb inside. By the way, those are standard. Now let's talk pricing. The not so Grand Wagoneer, the regular one starts at $68,590. The Grand Wagoneer Series 1 starts at $88,440. Then the top of the line Grand Wagoneer Series 3 starts at $104,845. As tested here, this is the Series 2 with some options. You're looking at $108,020. Now that starting price tag of $88,440 is significantly more than the competition like the Escalade, the Navigator, the BMW X7, and the Mercedes-Benz GLS, but the Grand Wagoneer does come with a long list of impressive standard features. The base Series 1 comes with these extremely comfortable and plush Napa leather seats. You have 20-way power adjustable driver and passenger seats, and you can really adjust them to any way that you want and to what is most comfortable for you. At that price, you obviously get heated and cooled front seats, but you also get heated second row seats as well as a heated steering wheel. Now to really justify that price tag, the Grand Wagoneer comes standard with massaging driver and passenger seats. The massage is actually pretty good. It's not as weak as some of the competition, but it's still not gonna cure any back pains. And of course, screen-wise, you get a 12.3 inch digital instrument display as standard, as well as the center 12 inch touchscreen display for you Connect 5 with navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You also have the 10.25 inch touchscreen display right below it and the 10.25 inch touchscreen display in the second row. Other standard features include a 19 speaker Macintosh sound system, a wireless charging pad, which is actually hidden behind the lower screen, a really nice ambient lighting system. It's not as bright as Mercedes-Benz or BMW, but it's still pretty nice. You also get a giant panoramic sunroof and then standard driver assist tech includes adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, a 360 surround view camera because you're gonna need it to park this large behemoth, an active lane management system, and much, much more. So my test model is a Series 2, which is the mid-trim, even though it has everything I just pointed out. Now let's see what else the Series 2 gives you, along with what options I have here that make this specific model cost over $108,000. So the Series 2 will upgrade the front seats to 24-way power adjustable in Palermo leather trim. This is really nice leather. It'll also add the digital rear view mirror, along with an automated parking system, along with a few other items. Now, my test model upgrades the standard 22 inch wheels to the ones you see here for $995. On the inside, it gets the premium group package for $3,995. And that basically upgrades the sound system to 23 speakers and you get cooled rear seats and a few other items. I also have the $3,595 convenience group package and that adds on the fam cam and the night vision camera with pedestrian and animal detection, which you can actually view in daytime like I am right now. And then my test model also has a rear entertainment package for $1,995, which I really recommend if you have kids in your family. And that's really what sends the price tag over $108,000. All right, so let's talk horsepower and torque. Power for the Grand Wagoneer itself comes from a 6.4 liter V8 pumping out 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque, and that's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And if you go for the not-so-Grand Wagoneer, just the Wagoneer itself, you're gonna get a 5.7 liter V8 pumping out 392 horsepower and 404 pound-feet of torque. But with that 6.4 liter V8, the Grand Wagoneer itself will do zero to 60 in just six seconds, which is pretty impressive for something that's so big and so heavy. Now, when it comes to drive mode, you're working with rock, sand and mud, snow, auto, and sport. 
Each of them have a really cool animation, and when you pop it into sport mode, the Grand Wagoneer is on a track. I just saw that. That's kind of weird. Now, when it comes to fuel economy, the Grand Wagoneer 4x4 gets 13 city and 18 highway. You have a 26.5 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging, after a few days of driving, a total of 11.1 miles a gallon. Ouch. So what do I think about the looks? It's not bad, to be honest. I know the Grand Wagoneer has been getting a lot of heat because of the pillars, but you can get the roof in body color instead of the black roof like you see here to help with that illusion. But yeah, overall, this thing has a lot of presence. I've been driving this around for a week and I've received a bunch of thumbs ups and people just taking pictures of it. So that right away shows me that there's a good amount of interest in this thing. One thing you'll actually notice is that there aren't any visible Jeep logos on the Grand Wagoneer. Jeep is positioning the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer brand as their high end luxury brand. So everything here carries a Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer badge. And there are a lot of them. You have Grand Wagoneer written all the way across the back and then you have a Wagoneer logo on the grill, and then you have Grand Wagoneer written on each side, and of course you have Wagoneer written on the wheel caps. The only places where I spotted the word Jeep was right here next to the side view mirror, and you'll see Jeep in the taillights as well as in the headlamps. Other than that, you get standard LED headlamps that do a really cool animation as you're walking up to the Grand Wagoneer or when you're locking it, and you also get standard LED taillights that also do a pretty cool animation, as you approach it or as you walk away from it. All right, before we hop inside, let's check out the cargo capacity. You can pop the trunk by using a button located right here. And once you get it opened, you're working with 27 cubic feet behind the third row, 71 cubic feet with the third row folded. And with all the rows folded, you're working with a massive 94 cubic feet. And since the Grand Wagoneer is a luxury vehicle, you have some buttons here to fold the third row automatically. You just push them and the third row will fold down. The second row is just a manual release. It's not automatic, so you have to put it up manually but you can put up the third row back into place automatically. Let's take a seat inside because when it comes to quality and the use of high quality materials, Jeep did an outstanding job. Overall, I think this is a beautifully designed interior and nothing like we've ever seen from Jeep or any other Stellantis brand. Just take a look around, you'll see a bunch of leather everywhere like here on the dash along with some really nice stitching. You have really nice wood trim and right here you'll see an aluminum Grand Wagoneer badge embedded right into the trim. By the way, you also have a bunch of Grand Wagoneer or Wagoneer badges all over the inside. Jeep does not want you to forget for a second that this is more of a Grand Wagoneer than a Jeep. The seats again are super adjustable and very comfortable no matter where you're sitting. That said, let's check out the legroom. Starting off with this second row, you have a total of 42.7 inches of legroom. So you have legroom for days. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position. And as you can see, I still have plenty of room. And overall, the second row does feel pretty luxurious. You have the center screen here to control your heated or cooled seats, your climate control, and you also have some storage right here under the center armrest. And then you also have manual second row shades, which I would have expected them to be automatic, but they are manual. To get into the third row, you just push this button right here and the second row will lift up and move forward, making way for you to climb into the third row. So let's climb into the third row and see what you're working with. It is pretty easy to climb back here. You have a total of 36.6 inches of legroom back here. And honestly, this is one of the most comfortable third rows I've seen in this segment. I still have plenty of legroom and this seat is all the way back. That seat is all the way back. It is very comfortable back here. And Jeep didn't just forget about the third row passengers. You have a vent right here, which is usually placed on the roof, but it's down here. I think that's a really cool placement. You have automatic reclining seat backs and you have a USB-C port and a USB-A port along with some cup holder and some extra storage right down there. One thing I do want to point out is that you don't always have to go to the back to fold or unfold the third row seats. You can do that from these buttons right here in the second row. That's very convenient if you're a parent. Now, before I give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy the Grand Wagoneer over the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have six cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers, obviously, two in the back for the second row passengers, and then third row passengers get a cup holder each on their side. One right there for the right passenger, one right there for the left passenger. Here are what the keys look like to the Grand Wagoneer. Does it have a Jeep logo? No, it has a Grand Wagoneer logo. The cool thing about the keys is you can actually lower the suspension just by clicking it twice to make it easier for you to get in or load anything that you want to. Door open and close down from the outside. And from the inside, Still very Jeep. When it comes to charging, your wireless charger is standard and it's hidden behind this screen right here, right in there. And then you have 
three USB-A ports and three USB-C ports right there. You've got another USB-C port and a USB-A port right here in the armrest. Rear passengers are working with two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports right there. They also get an extra USB-A port and a USB-C port in the armrest. And if you get the rear entertainment package, each of the screens have an extra USB-C port. And third row passengers get a USB-A port and a USB-C port on each side. So charging game wise, you're covered and then some. And finally, let's do an indicator and horn sound test here on the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Indicator first. Sounds like the indicator is like hopping or skipping. Kind of weird. Horn sound. Oh yeah, very solid indeed. And now that I've given you a tour of the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, let me give you my opinion on how this stacks up against the competition. All right, let's get to it. All right, just so you know where I'm coming from, I'm a huge diehard fan of the Cadillac Escalade. If there's any large luxury SUV that I would park in my driveway, the Escalade would be it. That's not to say the Grand Wagoneer is bad. It's actually very, very tempting. Nonetheless, the price tag is one thing I can't get over. Starting at around $88,000, this cost about ten dollars to $11,000 more than the competition, which in my opinion is just a pretty large ask by Jeep seeing as this is their first time really competing here. I mean, the one I'm testing here cost over $108,000. And I get it, this does come with a long list of standard features that if you added on when shopping for the competition, those can also cross the $100,000 mark very, very easily. That said, I think Jeep has done an outstanding job with the Grand Wagoneer, and I definitely think they will sell quite a few of these. I've been driving this around for a week and I've gotten the Jeep Wave, thumbs ups and people just coming up to me just to talk about it. Would you drop over a hundred grand on a Jeep? I mean, a Grand Wagoneer because they don't really want you to think of this as a Jeep. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace. It is very impressive what Jeep has done with the amount of luxury in this thing, but I definitely think anybody who's going to buy this is never going to go off-roading ever in their life.